What's going on everybody, this is Tatro, and today Ableton put out the details for the Ableton Live 10.1 update. There's a bunch of cool stuff, let's get into the details. Real quick, if you don't know me, my name is Tatro, your electronic music mentor. And if you enjoy live electronic music performances, tutorials, or content that's just gonna make you a more productive producer, click the subscribe button down below. Let's get into the details of Ableton Live 10.1. All right, so this was actually a really pleasant surprise to wake up to because this is the biggest update for Ableton since the release of Ableton Live 10. Now, this update is still in beta, but you can get in on that beta if you go to the link in the description. I'm actually really pumped about a lot of these additions and let's talk about them one by one. So the first one is the ability to import your own wavetables. I love wavetable in Ableton. It was a synth added with Ableton Live 10 and it just sounds so great and lush and the ability to add your own wavetables just adds that other level of customization and sound design that I'm sure a lot of people are looking for. It looks like a very similar process to adding your own impulses to a convolution reverb or something like that. I don't know much about synthesis and wavetable synthesis, but I will definitely be trying this out, importing my own wavetables to get my own sound. Looks like it's as easy as drag and drop, so that's dope. Also some new devices, which I found very surprising. So the first one being a channel EQ. Now this looks like some combination of the simplicity of an EQ3, but the level of control of an EQ8, just in the way they function, not in the amount of bands. It looks like you've got nice, solid control. I don't see why anybody would be using EQ3 after this really. Channel EQ looks like it's just gonna pretty much kill that. The next device is also sort of a combination of two pre-existing devices, simple delay and ping pong delay. Now we just have one device called delay. So it still gives you the option to adjust the delay time for either left or right channel independently. You have access to the filter and then also you can just switch on ping pong with the click of a button. So. This essentially kills simple delay and ping pong delay and just puts them into one. So it seems like that's an overall theme here is just the simplification of devices. The new automation features are gonna be amazing for workflow. You don't have to draw in your own curves anymore and your own lines and set breakpoints and make sure they're super precise because now you can just access common curves and slants right from a menu. So by right clicking, it looks like you're gonna have access to all these different types of curves and lines, like fade ins, fade outs at the click of a button. Not only will you be able to quickly add these shapes from a drop down menu, but you can just adjust the shapes too on the fly, which looks really simple and intuitive. Then there's also curve fitting, which makes it look like it's a lot easier to draw in curves with the draw tool. Entering in breakpoint values, like I can't believe this didn't exist already. Like if you've ever been trying to tailor a mix or breakpoints to get them either exactly on 0.00, .00 or back to a point where they were, it's very hard to get two breakpoints to match the same unless you're very precise and it takes a lot of time. I would always be off by like negative 0.01 or something like that and I would just leave it because what's the difference? But now you can just enter in breakpoint values which should have been in live a long time ago. You're able to resize the arrangement overview window now, which I don't really use the arrangement overview window that much. I've always like seen it there obviously, but it's always been kind of unusable the way it is. But maybe now with being able to resize it, it'll be a helpful overview. I'm not sure, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Probably most helpful for really like dense and long projects. Pinch zooming, awesome. Like I work on my MacBook Pro a lot. I'm also curious to see if it's gonna work with my magic mouse. Um, just really cool function that also probably could have been in there a long time ago. You'll also be able to export tracks with return effects. The streamlined keyboard shortcuts look very interesting, but I'm a little bit worried that now I'm gonna be pressing buttons either on accident or on purpose and it's gonna be like zooming out or doing crazy stuff. I don't know, it just looks like Z and X zoom in and out. I'm, I'm curious to see how they work in practice, but overall it looks like it's very easy to do some of the functions with these shortcuts. It looks like they're single key shortcuts. Just a little nervous about either getting used to it or accidentally hitting the wrong button and just like killing my workflow. I'm sure it's a thing you just get used to and you're into it. There's also gonna be VST3 support. I've never really had any issues with that. All my VSTs work. Good for you VST3 users. Now this last one, is the best update within this update, in my opinion. The ability to freeze tracks 
that are side chained. This has been the bane of my existence for such a long time. Basically the setup here is you've got this really great synth like a massive or something and you've side chained it to a kick drum like we've all done and that synth takes up like so much CPU as you start building up your project you want to just freeze it and you can't because it's been side chained. Now you can do that. I don't know how they did it, but they did it. You crazy son of a bitch, you did. This has been something I have needed and finally we have it. So the Ableton 10.1 update is gonna be free to all Ableton 10 users, currently in beta. I'll be stoked to start using some of these features when it comes out. If you're interested in getting in the beta, check the link in the description. And also while you're down there, let me know your thoughts. What do you think about the 10.1 beta? Are you looking for other updates? Do you wish they would have included some things? Do you feel like these updates are necessary? Will they be helping you in your workflow? Let me know in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and share it with a friend who might find it helpful. And don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy live electronic music performances, tutorials, and content to make you a more productive producer. This has been Tatro, your electronic music mentor. Have a good one.